Okay, let's go ahead and go through number four through six now. So for number four, we are finding the volume of a solid generated when that area above is rotated around the x-axis. So the way that we go ahead and do this is you want to start by understanding there's the difference between the washer method and the uh, disk method. Now, washer method is something that you would use anytime you have a shape that is right up against the axis that you're rotating around. So if I was rotating this shape, then I would use the disk method. And the reason for that is because you really just have one function here. You've got the distance from here to here, which we'll call f of x. And that represents the radius that you're going to rotate around the x-axis there, right? And so when you rotate it, it creates a circle with a radius of f of x. So pi r squared would be its radius. And then when you integrate from beginning to end, that gives you the volume of the shape that would result. But when you have a shape like the one that we have here, and you rotate it around an axis that it's not right up against. So as I rotate this, don't you guys agree, there's going to be a gap right here. There's going to be a hole. This shape here is going to get rotated around. It's going to leave a big hole in the middle. Now when that happens, uh, that's when you have what's called the washer method. And the way that the washer method works is, is you have one function, and you want to find the distance from that function to the axis. And then you have your other function. You want to find the distance from that function to the axis. Now, the longer one is what we call the big radius, which I'll use a capital R for. And the little one is what we call the little radius, because they're both going to trace out a circle as we rotate. So if I wanted to find the volume of shape that would be created by rotating the, the red line around the x-axis, the way that you find the radius is you do the function minus the axis, just like that. Now, in this case, the function of that red line is going to be this function here, f of x. So it's going to be f of x, and the axis is the x-axis, and that y value is 0, so that's what's going to go right there. So f of x minus 0 would be my big radius. Now my little radius is going to be the distance from this function to the x-axis. Okay, So that one is going to be equal to that function minus the x-axis. Okay, So there's my big radius and there's my little radius. And as we trace these out, they're both going to um, trace out a volume. And what I want to do is I want to subtract the volume of that is traced by the green function from the volume that's traced by the red function. And the way that looks is like this. You do your big radius squared. I'll put capital R here. Minus your little radius squared. So that's going to be f of x minus 0. And yes, you can just put f of x if you want to, because minus 0 is just f of x, right? And you can add the absolute value bars on there. And g of x minus 0. Now, here's what's important, is you do have to know which one's your big radius and which one's your little radius. Okay, Big radius has to come first. If you end up getting a negative answer, that you can just change it to a positive. It just means that you wrote them backwards, so it's not a big deal. But you do need to make sure that you put your big R first and your little r after that. But if you don't, it's okay. Just change the sign to a positive. Um, you might want to rewrite this if you end up with a negative, because if you did, that means you wrote it wrong. And you'll lose your setup point if you do that. So make sure that you know if you get a negative answer, change it to a positive, but also reverse the, the things that you thought big R and little r was. But there you guys have it. And since we're integrating with respect to x, once again, we're going to be going from 0 0.407 to 14.771. And that is how you'll do that one. So let's go ahead and type that one into our calculator at this time. And we're going to want to remember that um, 
I called the, uh, which one was that? Let's see, the g of x function. That one is the one that I called ln of x here. And the um, 1 fourth x minus 3, that's the um, f of x function. So I, I have to remember that f of x comes first, so I'm going to do y2 minus 0 first, followed by y1 minus 0 second. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and do that now. So we're going to go back to our home screen. We're going to do, oh, I forgot my pi. Shame on me. When you do these, you have a pi in the front because it's pi r squared, right? We're finding volumes based on circles, so pi r squared. So we need our pi in the front. So we're going to have a pi, and we're going to do math, 9, and we're going from 0 0.407 to 14.771, and then we're going to have the absolute value. Oops, wrong one. So we're going to do math num1 of y2 squared. Minus the absolute value. Oh, and I guess if you wanted to, you could put y2 minus 0. I, I just didn't do it, but typically you do want to have your axis in there. But if it's 0, you don't need it, right? But I'll just put it in there. Just so you guys remember, yeah, don't forget, you do need to include your axis usually. But in this case, my axis is just zero, so it doesn't matter. Um, now we'll do the other one. Math, num, absolute value, y1 minus zero. Come out of there and square it. And then dx. And we should be good to go after that point. Just takes a second to calculate, and so there would be our volume of the shape as a result of that. All right? So let's go ahead and move on to the next question, number five. On number five, I want you guys to notice something. We're rotating it around the line x equals negative three. Now x equals negative three would be a vertical line somewhere over here, which means we're rotating it vertically instead of horizontally. When you rotate vertically, your integral is going to be with respect to y. So I'm just going to go ahead and get this thing all set up right now. It's going to be another washer method. So it's going to look like this. Okay, and we also want to get our limits right. Since I'm integrating with respect to y, we go from our lowest y value to our highest y value. Okay. But now we need to figure out what our big radius is and our little radius, okay? Well, the big radius is the one that's farthest away from the axis. So we have this function here, and we have this function here. So as you guys can see, the red line is farther away from the axis than the green line at any point, at any value of y that you pick. So the, the red one there, once again, is my big function. But we have to remember that when we're integrating with respect to y, your equations have to be in terms of y also. Now, if you guys forgot, we already did that back on question number three, I believe it was. We found out that the g function can be written like this. And we found out that the f function can be written like this. And we've already entered those into our calculator. I stored this one here under y. Uh, I can't remember now. Let me look really quick. I stored that one under y4. And I stored this equation under y3. Okay. So, But when we write it down, we're going to have to make sure we got it right. But let's go ahead and come back to our radius. So the red line is the distance from the red line to this vertical line over here. Well, that's going to be that red function, which is 4y plus 12 minus the axis. And the axis is negative 3. And when you have double negative, you can just make it a plus. And if you wanted to, you can even combine those together. Because why not? You can. You don't have to. But I think maybe I'll leave them separate just because it's going to make a little bit more sense for my calculator when I do it that way. So I'll leave it like that. 
because when I do this on my calculator, I'm going to be putting this in as Y4, basic. I'm sorry, Y3, because that's what that is. I'll store it under Y3 on my calculator, and I'll just have the plus 3 on the end. So that's how I'll be entering it. All right, let's go ahead and uh, do the little radius now. The little radius is the distance of the green function to the axis. And so that one's going to be this function minus the axis. And since it's minus a negative 3, it's just plus 3, right? And you want to put absolute value bars. Now, technically, just so you guys know, it's supposed to be right minus left. So if your axis is to the right, then you would do the, instead of doing function minus axis, you would do axis minus function. It's whichever one's to the right that comes first. Um, but absolute value bars just kind of correct that issue, so you don't need to even worry about it. Okay, um, but let's go ahead and do this now. So I've got my big radius. My big radius is going to be 4y plus 12 plus 3. And my little radius, put absolute value bars on that, and my little radius is going to be e to the y plus 2 plus 3. And you want to put absolute value bars on that. Okay? And so, once again, it's important that you remember big R comes first and then little r. If you come out with a negative answer, that means you got them backwards and you're going to want to rewrite this. Um, but you can keep the same answer, just make it positive. Okay? But let's go ahead and type it in to our calculator. Now, my 4y plus 12 is right here. This is supposed to be 4y plus 12. I think I have a plus 2 there. Um, and then my e to the y plus 2 is right here under y4. So I'm going to have y3 come first right here in this spot, and then y4 come first in this spot over here. So back to our home screen. Here we go. We're going to do pi. We're going to do math 9. And we're going to go from negative 2.989 up to 0 0.693. We're going to do absolute value of y3. Plus 3 squared minus... The absolute value of y4 plus 3 squared. And you put our dx in there. And we have to put dx instead of dy simply because our calculator doesn't do y's integrals. So that, and you got your answer there. I'm getting a pretty big number, 743.795. Okay. Let's go ahead and do our last question here. Find the volume of the solid generated when the area above is rotated around the line y equals 1. Um, so the line y equals 1 would be somewhere up here. Okay. Um, so now that's a horizontal line, which means that we are going to be integrating with respect to x. So we're back to these numbers again. But there's my setup, because I already know since we're rotating an area that's not right up against the axis around a horizontal axis, we're going to be using the washer method. So we have a big radius and a little radius. So I've got my red function here, and I've got my green function. As you guys can see, the green function is actually closer to the axis of rotation than the red line. And so my big radius is going to be the red function, which is f of x, this one over here, notice I'm going to use this function now instead of the, the one that we used earlier because we're doing this with respect to x, minus the axis. And if you're not sure about the order, go ahead and put absolute value on there. But now technically, actually, if you wanted to get this order right, the axis is higher than the function. So the really the right way to write this is like this. 
but it doesn't matter so long as you have absolute value bars. But I, I want to write it in the correct order because I just like to teach things that are correct rather than things that are not right. So makes sense, right? All right, then we have little r. Uh, the little r, once again, it's going to be the axis minus the function, which in this case is the g. Okay, and so we're just going to go ahead and plug these things right in where they go. And then we're ready to punch it into our calculator. And we should have an answer after that. So let's go ahead and do that. Now for me, my f of x function is stored under y2. So that's what I'm going to type on my calculator is 1 minus y2. And then this one's y1. So in this spot, I'm going to be typing 1 minus y1. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. We have pi integral. 0 0.407, 14.771 for my limits, absolute value of 1 minus f of x, which is going to be y2 squared, minus absolute value of 1 minus y3, y1. The X, enter, should have an answer soon, and we're getting 154.269 for that one. All right, and that just about does it. So that ends our worksheet. So you're going to be seeing on your exam tomorrow a question like this. There's going to be more um, questions that are more like, you know, the rest of your study guide that we looked at, but I wanted you guys just to be prepared for something like these types of questions a little bit. Um, you're going to have to know how to find the points of intersection. You're going to have to know when you integrate with respect to y and when you integrate with respect to x. You're going to need to know how to find the area between curves, how to find areas of volumes with known cross sections, and how to do volumes created by rotations, whether it's with respect to y or x. And so that concludes it, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one.